Okay, hello Hi. everybody. If you're there already. Yes. So welcome to our two o'clock webinar today. I am Anika and I have with me Jaden. And um, if you're so whenever you join us um, or let us know about yourself, say hi, introduce yourself. Uh, tell us where you're from, where you are now, and how you're doing. So my name is Anika. I'm originally from Bangladesh, uh, and I have been living in Italy for six years now. What about you, Jaden? Uh, yes, so my name is Jaden, and I'm from England. Um, in the south of England, from London, which is the capital. Um, but I have been living in Milan uh, uh, for six months. So I'm very new here. <laughs> and we yeah. both teach in the Via Maravilli School. Um, yeah. So if anyone is here, and if anyone, especially if anyone is from Via Maravilli, the school in Milan and say hello um, because yeah it's really nice to meet all of you oh no oh I think everybody's gone okay, now so what are we <laughs> doing today in so we're going to talk about the five senses uh, today so the five human senses I would say <laughs> I think different animals can have different types of senses for Sounds <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so here is the plan. Ah, uh, it's true, it's true. Do you wanna read this out? Mm, it's true, I think snakes, for example, can, uh, they can see heat, like infrared. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. I think there's a time lag between when I hear you and when you speak. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we'll work it out. Exactly. So what are the five senses? So, um, so we're going to go over, over them one by one. And so what is the sense that you um, perceive <laughs> through your ear? Uh, that is the sense of sound or the sense of hearing. So I know lots yeah. of people say hearing, but personally, I say sense of sound. And I think both are acceptable. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah. Sense of hearing, sense of hearing, or sense of sound. Cool. And what is the sense that we perceive through our through our skin? Uh, the sense of skin. touch. Yep. Absolutely. And how about um, the sense that we um, that we feel through our eyes? Uh, it's really hard not to say it. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard. So that's sight. Uh huh. So that's sight. Oh, we have a viewer here. So if you know the answer, please type it out. What is so we were talking about the five senses? What is the sense that you um, perceive through your nose? Smell. So your sense of smell mm -hmm. is correct. So what have I missed? So we talked about eyes, ears, skin, nose, and my oops. favorite one. <laughs> through um, your tongue? Oh yes, through your tongue. That is the sense of taste. Although I have heard that most of uh, your taste is actually through smell, but I don't know how true this is. Most of your smell, uh, most of your senses, really. Most of your taste. 
Tastes, okay. That's interesting. Well, mm. the sense of smell is interesting because it's also connected to memory. Ah, yeah. I mean, I heard That's true. you um, smell something familiar, a lot of memory comes back to you. Hmm. Interesting. Um, is there something else we can elaborate about over here, you think, Trevi? No, I don't think so. These are just um, the nouns we use to describe the senses. So we would say my sense of sight or sense of smell. Um, but of course, the verbs we use are the standard ones. So to see, to smell, to hear, to taste and to feel. Um, uh, but mm -hmm. to hear, yeah, so the sense of hearing is different to saying to listen to, um, because to listen yeah. to is when you choose to direct uh, your attention to a specific sound or noise, whereas the sense of hearing is just your ability to hear, so your ability to perceive sound. Perfect. Very nice. Now we're going to read this um, paragraph and complete it with this, these words on the right. So I'm going to read out the words um, uh, that we need to use. So we have touch, tongue, brain, sight, five, smell, hear, skin, taste, transmit, and function. Okay, cool. Okay. And yeah, just for everyone not to forget that the G in sight is silent, um, whereas the U and the E in tongue is also silent. So we do pronounce the G in tongue, but it's not as strong, although this depends on your accent, um, because there are some parts, for example, of the UK where they will say tongue, but personally, I don't. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we can start reading it um, and take turns in filling out the. Okay, so I'll start with the beginning sure. part. Traditionally, there are blank senses and consider and corresponding sense organs. So we have talked about this before, so five senses. So these are the eyes, nose, ears, blank, and the skin. So what uh, we have missed here is eye, ear, okay, eyes, ear, nose. Um, hmm. Tongue and the skin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so just so everyone knows, an organ is a group of tissues in the body that work together to perform a function. Um, and fun fact for everyone as well, the skin is an organ because it's tissues that work together. Mm -hmm. And the function is to feel things, so to, to sense things. Um, and also to protect, protect your body from all sorts of exterior mm. stuff. Yeah. I also heard that the skin is the biggest organ in the body. Yes, it is. Uh, not by weight. I don't know which one is by weight, mm -hmm. but by actual size. Yes. Mm. All right. Yeah. Okay, so all right, I'm going to continue. Each organ has a different, um, I would say, a different function. Yeah, exactly, like a different job or role. Yeah. Goes ahead and says, provide a sense of sight. And the nose is a conduit for the sense of smell. The ears let us hear. 
while the tongue allows us to taste. Finally, the, okay, so I may have to read this first. Finally, the blank, which is the largest organ. Finally, the skin, so which is what we were talking about before, is the largest organ, exercises the sense of touch. The function of the sense organ is to receive internal or external stimuli. Uh, so this is an interesting word because stimulus is the singular and stimuli is the plural. It's a little irregular word here. Um, and blank them to the nervous system. So I would say and transmit them to the nervous system and thus to the brain. The coordinated use of these senses leads to awareness and balance in the human body. Okay, great. And I just want to say there's some really interesting language in this paragraph. Um, for example, it says the ears let us hear while the tongue allows us to taste. Um, so let us and allows us is language that we would usually use for permission. So if someone gives you permission to do something. Um, but here in this context, it's used to show um, ability or that something is possible. So we are able to hear because the ears allow it. So not the ears give you permission, but they give you the ability. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, okay, so we're going to move on. So which of these senses are these examples of? There, there may be more than one answer. So let's talk about the first one, a breathtaking sunset. So a lot Ooh. of different senses are involved here, isn't it? Or maybe yeah. majorly one. <laughs> Yeah, so I would say probably the first or the main sense is the sense of so sight. Because usually people, usually people want to see the sunset because it looks very visually appealing. It's very beautiful. Um, but also maybe you could have the sense of um, touch either, uh, either as well. Because um, when the sun goes down, also, the temperature begins to change. It begins to get cooler. So this is something I'm sure you would feel on your skin. Sure, great. And then we have fresh ground coffee. So interesting word mm. here. Ground is um, the past participle of grind. So when you grind coffee, you turn it into smaller pieces. So fresh ground coffee um, definitely gives off a nice aroma. So uh, it involves smelling, the sense of smell. Mm -hmm. Also, um, if you're touching it, probably, um, yeah, you probably wouldn't touch it, I guess. It would just brew that <laughs> coffee. So majorly yes. the sense of you would, smell is involved. You would do something else with it, though. Oh, drink it and you're going to taste the coffee. Or well, maybe if you like coffee, you <laughs> don't have how to you drink forget it. The, how I forget that. Absolutely, I would. <laughs> yeah. No, but coffee, it does. It definitely has a like very first... uh, special smell. Yeah. You smell it before you taste it. True. And I love so the, some of those shops or bakeries where you just walk in mm. and you smell fresh ground coffee. Oh, I love it. The smell of coffee in the morning. Okay, so here's the next one. A thunderstorm on a hot day. So what do you think of this, Jaden? What sense, which okay. senses are involved? I think this one has actually a lot of senses because you would obviously have the sense of touch because you would feel the heat of the day. Um, and maybe if there was some rain and a thunderstorm, you would feel that as well if you were outside. 
Mm, but in a thunderstorm, there's lots of thunder and lightning. It's probably very stormy, so there are probably lots of dark clouds overhead, which just means above. Um, so you would also use your sense of sight to see the thunderstorm. You would use your sense of hearing or your sense of sound to hear the thunder, to hear the rain again, or sometimes even the wind. Uh, I don't know about you, Anika, but if you've ever been at home, and the wind has been really quite violent or aggressive. You can hear it through the trees. You can hear it coming mm -hmm. through uh, your windows if it's not if they're not fully closed. Um, so yeah, really a lot of senses involved, and some people as well um, can smell the rain uh, on the floor. Actually, on the ground, there's a word for that. It's called petrichor. And it's the the smell of the rain on the ground. So when it's wet outside. Nice. I, I don't know if now. anyone would taste this. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. So next up is a screeching train. So this Screeching is the, the really shrill, high-pitched sound that you can hear when a train stops. Kind of like a kind of sound. I can't really make how it would be. Um, so this, is, this involves the sense of hearing. And obviously, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're standing there watching the train, you would see, see the train coming to a stop. Okay, so the next expression is this. Homegrown strawberries. Um, wow, okay, so homegrown strawberries. Um, you would, of course, be able to see them. You would be able to see the colors for when they are ready and ripe um, or when they are not ready. So whether they are still green or like a white color, a very really pale green, or if they are red. Um, and of course, I would eat these. So you would also be able to taste the flavors. Um, I think probably homegrown strawberries, actually, I don't know. In my mind, they are sweeter, but I don't know if I've ever had them, so I'm not sure. Have you? Do you ever grow any of your own fruit and vegetables? I haven't actually, but it reminds me of a time when I went to the mountains in Malaysia where they had um, mm -hmm. a strawberry garden, they called it. Oh, lots lots I have also trees. picked strawberries, actually. Oh, I'm a liar, yeah. yeah. Wasn't it Cameron <laughs> Highland? Wasn't it Cameron uh, no. Highland? No, it wasn't. I didn't go there. It was in oh. uh, Indonesia. Oh, nice. Those, Those were good. really sweet. Hmm. They were nice. And you could pick all the big ones, which I love. Yeah, I hate yeah. when you, uh, you you buy strawberries and there are like two that mm. are really too big for anyone to eat, and then a hundred that are this mm. tiny little tiny mm. ones. Yeah, yeah, no, I like I like the big strawberries. Me too. Okay. And probably as well, you would um, get the sense so of the touch next because you would have to pick them. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so next up is a pork roast cooking in the oven. So lots of senses are involved here. So you will smell it first, I guess. Um, and uh, you will see it cooking in the oven. So a little bit of... Yeah, make sure it doesn't involved. burn. Yes. Uh, the color change and everything. And um, sense of taste is definitely involved if you're eating it. What else? Um, I think we would not hear... eat this. <laughs> I mean, I don't eat pork, but <laughs> someone else would taste it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> somewhere, and someone is tasting it. Somewhere, someone, yeah. And maybe the taste of the, the um, maybe sound is involved a little bit. I don't know if you hear it sizzling. When you just take no, it no. out of the... I, I'm not sure, to be honest. <laughs> Probably not. No, maybe. I would imagine it produces a lot of oil. 
um and okay. greasy yeah, i think i think it would sizzle a little bit but you'd have to get really mm-hmm. close and i don't know if you want to be this close to sizzling mm-hmm. oil <laughs> okay here's the last one i think it's the last one oh how cute a warm embrace yeah so a warm embrace just means a friendly hug or if someone holds you um but with with feeling someone holds you with feeling i think mm-hmm. so if no you would obviously have the sense of touch uh because you would feel the other person and also hopefully the warmth of their bodies <laughs> hopefully you're not hugging someone yeah. very cold <laughs> um sense of smell because again you'll be very close to another person so you're probably likely to smell them if you are small like anika and i then uh mm-hmm. your your head is going directly into their body there's no no over the shoulder <laughs> <laughs> issues just that um yeah you should should be able to see the person uh possibly hear them breathing mm-hmm. um but you shouldn't be able to taste them so if you're tasting them you're not doing the warm embrace correctly <laughs> you've gone too far you've overstepped it's just a hug it's just a hug <laughs> that would be funny that would be funny okay oh we've got another one an ice cream cone so here Ooh. an ice cream cone yeah i love ice cream cones i always order cones and not cups mm. Although mm, I later regret it because it all trickles down my arm. Yeah, yeah, this is the <laughs> problem. So, an ice cream cone involves a sense of uh, sight. You see it, you'll be able to see it. And the sense of taste, of course. You taste really good ice cream, the sweetness of it. And um, what else? I think that's about it. Well, I don't think we smell. For you, you said you, you experienced the sense of touch. <laughs> right, I forgot. You'll be holding the cone, of course. Uh, yes, so and if you're a Nika, you will have ice cream all over your arm. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, okay. But I don't think that ice cream has a smell. But also, my sense of smell is not excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, I wouldn't say that I can mm-hmm. smell ice cream. Yeah, I wouldn't say that either. They don't. Okay. So do you think you've missed anything? I think we've covered it all, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so here's the next slide. The nose knows. So interesting difference in pronunciation here. So it's the nose z sound a little bit, nose and nose. Yeah. So there is there is certain vocabulary we use to make observations using our senses. So let's talk about them. So we have it smells um, or it smells like when it's mm-hmm. uh, when it smells something similar to something. It sounds or it sounds like it tastes it tastes like it feels it feels like and it looks or looks like. So these are the verbs we use to talk about. Uh, to describe something but well, this is i think a really interesting slide because other than it smells um i would never use uh, any of this vocabulary without the word like you could sometimes um mm-hmm. for smells and for tastes you could mm-hmm. also use the word of the preposition of if you didn't want to use the word like so it smells mm-hmm. of something it tastes of something um but for the rest of them i would never just say it sounds you can say it smells but it smells is always also negative mm-hmm. if you say something smells it means it smells bad mm-hmm. unless oh, you're then using I guess an you could say it, i guess yeah no no yeah i've just realized so you could say mm-hmm. it tastes good it sounds great it feels rough okay so probably for the adjective we don't use like and for nouns we use like what do you think exactly yeah the exceptions though no no i'd say that that's correct so 
Okay. So we would, we use like with nouns. Oh yes, <laughs> we've got our answers. Yes, we use like okay. with nouns, but no preposition is needed for adjectives. Okay, for example, excellent. fresh ground coffee smells delicious, but it looks like dirt. <laughs> okay, uh, true. It's true. Uh, so give your own example. So Ooh. we can see that someone is around so if you're watching please give your own example about anything um we mm -hmm. can also turn this into a game and describe something using these expressions and we can guess what the thing is oh i like that i like that a lot could be food uh... i guess that would be easier to do with food Food or drinks. Mm. Okay, so hmm. So I can okay. go for it. Okay, um, maybe it it tastes uh, very. Um, it tastes. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. So it tastes sweet. And okay. it's very soft to the touch. Mm, it's usually light in color. I guess it could be anything color, but I can think of a white one. Mm, and it's usually served cold. Or normal temperature. <laughs> I definitely Yoga. preserve it in the fridge. <laughs> Yogurt? Uh, no, it's not. It's um, it's um, you bake it, or you freeze it. <laughs> Very nice in the summer. I like the baked ones. Cheesecake? Yes, it is a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So the viewers here, you can also help us out. Write your own description of something, food or drinks or whatever else, and we can guess. But okay. do you want to go next, Jaden? Sure. Okay, so it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I don't know what this means, and I'm scared. But okay, so it tastes good. Uh -huh. Um, it smells. Oh no, it tastes sweet. It mm -hmm. smells of fruit, like fruit. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looks like a pea. It looks like a pea. It looks like a pea. Not a pea, like pea, mm -hmm. like urine. <laughs> so it tastes sweet. It smells of fruit, but it um, looks like urine. Oh my God. <laughs> It, it, it looks like dehy dehydrated urine. Ah, so this I is a riddle, a riddle for all. Ew, is, is it liquid? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's a liquid, yes. It's a Ew, liquid. Um... <laughs> oh, it's best served cold. I don't know what that means, though. <laughs> you said, you said uh, this thing is served cold for your cheesecake. Oh, OK. It's best served cold. Um, tea? Oh no, it's not best of cold. It looks it's like it. urine. Um, vinegar. It smells, and it smells like, like fruit. fruit. It smells <laughs> like fruit. No. Tastes sweet. Uh, looks like urine. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um. I, mean, I guess it also oh, sounds like like urine if you pour it into a glass and you've got the whole. <laughs> Are you talking about wine, white wine? No, but that is that's a good example. Hmm. That was it's close. I will give it to you. It's apple juice. Apple juice. All right. Apple. Oh, well oh, done. You got it. Great. Well done, Dos. <laughs> it's apple juice. Great. <laughs> so you all know I stay hydrated, so my urine mm. does not look like apple juice, but mm -hmm. someone's out there I'm sure does. <laughs>
Cool. Okay. 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 So to the next part, so, so we can cover other vocabularies. And so exactly. But everyone it. is still welcome to uh, put in their riddles. If they want at any point throughout the lesson. We like to hear them. Oh yes, it's always fun. So in cool. the meantime, we can talk about some figurative language. So basically, they, we have explained three different types. Um, a metaphor is a comparison without using like or as. For example, her, her soft voice was music to his ears. You have oh, great beautiful. taste in fashion. These are really nice, nice metaphors, aren't they? Yeah, I like them. And then we've got like them similes. Hmm. Yeah. So this could be really useful if you um, if you like writing. So I know Jaden uh, likes writing <laughs> as well. So this could be really nice. So for simile, uh, it's a comparison using like or as. For example, eating without salt is like eating cardboard. <laughs> Uh, although too much salt is not good for health. And he's blind That's as a true. bat and deaf as a doorknob. This is a really yeah. common one. Blind as a bat, deaf as a yeah. doorknob. I wonder why they call it deaf as a doorknob. But that's just how I it mean, is. a doorknob can't hear. Well, yeah. Or it, it could have been deaf as a wall. The wall can't hear either, but... But anyway, that's, that's true. true. That's a really yeah, nice. You can, I like it. You can adapt it as you like. Mm -hmm. You can choose any inanimate and unable to hear object. It works fine. Oh, yes. And finally, a hyperbole is an exaggeration. For example, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. That's also very common. Yes. Um, so obviously this is the higher level, but just to go through it a bit, um, of course, with a metaphor, um, mm -hmm. or as the title of this slide says, this language is figurative. So metaphors aren't something that are possible, but they're something that convey and that tell us uh, meaning. Okay, so what we think. So in the first mm -hmm. example, her soft voice, of course, we actually now use uh, the adjective soft to describe the way people speak. So it's really common. But mm -hmm. soft uh, generally or literally means the way something feels. So mm -hmm. is it rough or is it soft? Um, so someone's voice can't have a physical feeling, which is why it's a metaphor. Yeah. Whereas a simile, I always like as well because it's like saying um, simile is very close to the word similar. Mm -hmm. So when you use a simile, you're just saying this thing is similar to this other thing. So <laughs> eating without salt is similar. So it's like eating cardboard in terms of flavor. And then hyperboles and um, English people, actually, we use these all the time. We're very exaggerative people. Um, mm -hmm. So we always say things like, oh, I'm so hungry. I could eat this ridiculously sized animal. Or, oh, I've got so much food. I could feed three million people. Of course, it's not possible. Um, but it's just mm -hmm. a nice way to express how what I mean, you know, what I really think. Yeah. OK. So we can think of figurative language phrase for each of the five senses. Uh, so if you, someone else is, uh, someone is there watching, you can tell us about your own example or you can create your own example, something you haven't heard. Hmm. Okay, so then what can we say for smell? And also, would you like to do a metaphor, a simile or a hyperbole? You only have to do one. Hmm. So I would choose a simile, <laughs> I could say. Okay. Hmm. Let me pick a, a something that in, in, 
that we can find in real life. So for example, this shop smells like coffee. This bakery smells like coffee. Yes, but then that's not a simile. Oh, but then it's not a simile. I'm sorry. So yeah. <laughs> because um, that's genuinely what it smells mm -hmm. like. Yeah, it's really true. So it's not exactly that. It has to be similar. Um, yeah, but you could say something like, um, this shop smells as good as coffee. Um, hmm. Which is saying that you have the same experience or the same feeling mm -hmm. from smelling coffee, which is good, uh, as you do when you walk into the shop. So it smells right. as good as coffee. You're right. Yeah. But no, it's mm. good. It's good though that you um you mentioned mm. this because it is it's different. So we only use similes if something is similar to, but it's not it's not real, it's mm. not genuine. Otherwise, yeah. we use like um to mean yeah, this yeah, is you're what right, you're right. this it's thing like is. A comparison. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. But usually when I uh, make similes, I always find it easier to use the as formation because like yeah. is quite confusing. Yeah, you, you may want to elaborate a little more, like you can use a verb, like it smells like, or it, um, like the example they have here, uh, like eating cardboard. You need usually in the verb, I guess, after that. Uh, but not always because Hmm. Oh no, maybe, maybe. Not like in the like in cardboard. Hmm. But the, you know there's a famous song from Nirvana, it smells like teen spirit. Teen spirit. I was thinking of the same thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> so really it's a comparison, but I think what makes it a simile or what makes hmm. it a metaphor is just that it's not uh it's not genuine, it's not realistic, it's not something that you can match in terms of senses. Um mm -hmm. but it helps to describe how you feel. Hmm. True. Okay, let's try one with taste. Mm. Okay. God, it's difficult. Um, so I was. Hmm. So you could say. Um, well, it reminds me of something spicy. Like you could use exaggeration or metaphor with that, I guess. Oh, maybe you could say um, <laughs> this chili tastes <laughs> tastes of hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously, like hell. Fire. Ah, okay. So if you say um, tastes like fire, we will be using a simile. So this chili mm -hmm. tastes like fire. If we want a metaphor, we can say uh, this chili tastes of burning or mm -hmm. yeah, of hell. Something that's not true. You cannot <laughs> taste burning. You can feel burning. Mm -hmm. um, or yeah, you can say it tastes like mm -hmm. burning, and then we make it into a simile. Cool. Or this chili is as hot as a fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. True. Okay. So next up, we have touch. So we can talk about texture or temperature. So a really common one I can think of is um, we are boiling this summer. So yeah. we're not really boiling exactly. as in hot water, but it's so hot. Metaphorically, yeah. we're all boiling. That's a great metaphor. And also we use the opposite as well. We're freezing. No one is genuinely freezing, I hope. <laughs> so <laughs> Exactly. And then we have sight. So with colors, it's really common. Yeah, of course. We use colors a lot when we talk about emotion. Um, so mm -hmm. seeing red or um, someone is green with envy. Again, it's not a physical thing. It's metaphorical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And last but not the least, we have hearing or sounds. So, um, for example, I can think of um, someone singing as sweetly as a bird, <laughs> but that sounds a little yeah. cheesy, I know. 
No, no, that's really lovely. Um, okay, so that's a really lovely simile. So as sweetly mm -hmm. as a bird, so we're comparing, mm -hmm. or we can exaggerate. Uh, the noise is so loud, I am going deaf. And again, hopefully this is nice. not true. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. Okay. So perhaps we can move forward to the next slide here. So we have some nice vocabulary, really common. Um, what do you think each of these sense metaphors mean? So maybe we can read out the list and then match them up. So I'm going to read the left side and Jaden can read the right column. So we have chill out, feeling blue, a cloudy memory, a shady character, feeling rough, and a bright idea. So these mm. involve some kind of um, senses. Uh, so something that could be um, unfamiliar to you is the word rough, maybe. Rough is the opposite of smooth. So if something feels um, rough, the surface is um, causes friction. Mm. It's not so smooth like glass, for example. This is smooth. And something rough would be um, mm, concrete or, or um, asphalt. The street, the surface of a street is rough. Mm. Yeah, and okay, just again so... to everyone, um, pay attention to the silent Gs as well, like in bright and rough. Uh, we don't pronounce these Gs. Mm -hmm. Actually, in the word rough, the GH sound makes more of an F noise. Whereas in bright, we just don't mention it at all. Mm -hmm. um, then on the right, we have can't remember, relaxed, mm -hmm. a good plan, in poor health, sad, and an untrustworthy person. So someone you cannot trust. Okay, so the first one to chill out would be to relax. Yes, So I think people use this one uh, three times. Yeah, I think people use this one a lot. Um, it can be used to, to describe what you're doing. So for example, I'm chilling out or I'm going to chill out. But also, if you're in a tense environment, you can tell somebody to chill out. Um, so you can use it more as an imperative, like relax, don't shout at me, chill out, calm down. Yeah. Right. So the next is feeling blue. So very often we use colors to talk about emotions. So feeling blue is to feel sad. Okay, next up is a cloudy memory. So cloud makes something, makes the sky not clear. So when your memory is cloudy, you can't remember things. Mm. I've also had the same phrase, but with the word foggy instead. So I've got a foggy memory. Mm. And again, because I think fog that's really, uh, it's probably that's more common. vision. Okay. Good point. And then we have a shady character. So a shady person is someone you don't want to uh, you don't want to trust. So an untrusty, untrustworthy person, someone who perhaps has done something wrong in the past. So you're doubtful of his behavior. And then we have feeling mm. rough. So it's not a positive feeling you are in poor health, you're not feeling well, feeling rough. Yeah, and a bright idea often, is... Uh, feeling rough is often used um, when you have a hangover. <laughs> People ask you how you feel when you are hungover. After a night of drinking, yeah. you can say, I'm feeling rough. You're not feeling the best version of yourself. Yeah, that's a good example. So a hangover is a nice, uh, it's a useful word to remember. So 
this is a feeling of uh, how you feel in the morning if you have drank too much the night before. It's sort of a headache and headache and heavy head, so hangover <laughs> after too much apple juice. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So, do you think we have missed anything else here? Um, no, I think they're all quite clear. Um, I really like the adjective mm -hmm. shady. Um, and just mm -hmm. if anyone doesn't know what shade is, so a shadow is when um an object blocks the sun and sunlight is missing from the ground so we all have shadows um but shade is kind of just a place of darkness um mm -hmm. so if i if uh, there is a shadow of a building on the ground and it's a hot day uh, i can stand in the shade of the building so i can stand in the, mm -hmm. the darkness of what the building has caused with the shadow um, so a shady person is someone you imagine to spend a lot of time in the shadows um, because they don't really want to come out and be open in the sunlight or be honest. Um, so yeah, I just think it's a really nice adjective. I like it a lot. Mm, absolutely. Mm, okay. Great. So let's talk about some of these objects here. What do you see in these pictures? So maybe we can try and use some of the, the used before. Mm. So some of these pictures look, uh, look like two different things. For example, if you look at um, C, that's an interesting photo there. Mm -hmm. Like, what can what do you see first, Shady? Mm, so I see the I see the glass or the cup first. Actually, this kind of cup mm -hmm. is called the chalice. Um, so if any of you have ever been at least to a Catholic church, you know the priest always gives wine in a chalice. Um, mm -hmm. But there is also the profile, so the side of two men's faces. So which do you see first? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. What did you see first, Anita? Hmm. So um, I see the the cup first as well. So that's mm -hmm. what I saw first, the black cup. But then after a while, the faces appeared. Right. So these, I think these are called optical illusions. Like you sometimes, yeah. uh, something appears one way, but it's actually the other way. Yeah, I like it. It's something you use uh, to trick your sight. Um, mm -hmm. So to, yeah, to trick your, your senses. It can be really fun because it can help to train your senses so you can use them uh, more effectively. Mm -hmm. But yeah, also it's just fun. Mm -hmm. Although, um, in letter E, actually, I think this kind of illusion is actually used um, to check for color blindness. So if you are color blind, you should not be able to see the green pathway or the green something in the yellow and the orange dots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think different people would see different numbers even. So some people might see 71 some people might see 74 depending on the shades <laughs> okay so we have just about a minute left so probably we can um run through um the slides again very quickly yeah, to some summary so today's lesson was about yeah so today's lesson was about the five senses at first we talked about the different five different senses and words relating to that. We have used some um, different expressions and talked about different senses involved with them. We have used some verbs uh, to describe things. Um, we have used like with nouns. For example, it smells like coffee. And we have used adjectives with um, 
the verb and with no preposition. For example, it sounds good. And we have also talked about some figurative language metaphors where we don't use like or as. We have talked about similes when we compare things and we need the verb, the words like or as. And we sometimes use um, exaggerations to talk about, to describe things. For example, hungry, uh, so hungry you could eat a horse. And finally, we talked about some vocabulary that you can use for um, sort of emotions or feelings. For example, chill out, uh, feeling blue, cloudy memory or foggy memory, shady character, feeling rough and a bright idea. Okay. So if you're watching this later, I hope you you'll find this useful. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's it, I guess. <laughs> okay, so thank have you. a great day, guys. Thank bye, you. Bye. bye.